Hello, everyone. Welcome to Laser Focus. This, of course, is the deep dive pop culture podcast from Nerdist. I'm Kyle Anderson. This week, we're going to be talking about something very near and dear to my heart and the heart of our guest, um, and also something we're particularly conflicted about. So uh, a little bit of context. Uh, this is uh, 2024. Did you know that? <laughs> if you didn't know that, change your checks. Um, but uh, not only did I turn, f- do I turn 40 this year? Uh, I was born in 1984. A lot of like really great movies and TV shows and cartoons and comics are turning 40, um, which and music for that matter. Like 84 is a kind of an amazing year for art and uh, you know like popular media. Um, and uh, we were trying to figure out you know like some pieces to write. And uh, uh, my guest, <laughs> one of uh, one of your stalwart favorites. Uh, wanted to do um, some pieces about these and kind of was finding some, I think really interesting parallels between all of these, maybe not the movies necessarily, but certainly that takes, you know, that's part of it, but um, cartoons, toys, comics, all kind of played into each other in a really interesting way. And so we're basically this, this week we're going to talk about um, cartoons, what they mean to us, people of a certain age, how they got us into toys in a way that nobody, no other, uh, generation is into toys why that means that we're still collecting the same type of toys that we collected now mm-hmm. they're just better made and um whether or not that's necessarily a good thing and then of course we'll talk about some of our favorite cartoons and if they've stood the test of time anyway that is enough preamble i will welcome to the show eric diaz hey eric hello yeah well, uh, you know if you're <laughs> if you thought eric and i could talk about comics for a million years uh-huh. get ready to listen to us talk about cartoons because we could do the same ass thing uh-huh <laughs> um so yeah i was born in 84 so i'm kind of like uh you know some of these shows i knew because you know i was becoming a child who was aware of cartoons yeah. and things like that um as they were on their uh, these particular shows were like on their last legs into the next stage but so like i'm kind of a mid to late 80s kid um yeah, I'm you a, were right I'm a in gen- the heyday. yeah i was right in the heyday i turned 10 in 84 so yeah i was i was there for the transition um from cartoons just being, you know, Saturday morning, weekday afternoon cartoons, you know, being this kind of thing that was mostly reruns. There was a lot of reruns of, you know, weekday afternoons was like old episodes of Scooby-Doo, old episodes of Looney Tunes and stuff into half hour packaged commercials for toy lines. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as an adult, I look at that and I think that was really gross, like mm-hmm. that they allowed that. But at the same time, most of my happy childhood memories revolve around these packaged commercials sold to me as stories. And I know that like, I, I, it's very, I have a conflict about this now. Um, but that's the truth that that's what it was, yeah. but, you know, I mean, to be fair, Saturday morning cartoons and those things existed since the sixties. Mm-hmm. Like there was a Saturday morning block always. And they made toys from those cartoons. It wasn't that they didn't, you know, there were Scooby-Doo toys in the 70s. There were Super Friends toys in the 70s, whatever, think of whatever, you know, Josie and the Pussycats, whatever else. But they weren't specifically created to sell you toys. Mm -hmm. You know, there wasn't, you know, they had a pitch for Scooby-Doo, Hanna-Barbera, let's do this show. The show takes off. Hey, we want to make some toys out of this after the fact. The toys came first by, by the early 80s. And then everything was built around it. And sometimes those were, you know, uh, previous IPs you know, that existed before, but often they weren't, you know? Yeah. And I, what I find, yeah, cause I'm exactly with you. Like on the one hand, I'm like, this is horrible. You're, you know, you're marketing to children who are impressionable because they know that that's a great way to get their parents to spend money as if their kids want a thing and all this stuff. And, and you always knew also that if a cartoon was out, it's, there were going to be toys attached to it. That was just, that's why they made the cartoon. Like yeah. it was always that first. Uh, um, so I generally think that that's bad. <laughs> like, right. but also, um, like you said, like that's some of my, f- my favorite memories of watching TV as a child was, yeah. was these cartoons that became toys. But also what I think is really interesting is because they, it was like a competition of like, we, we want to try to sell these toys. They would actually get, really good writers to write the cartoons yes. yeah. and and like a lot of them were really well produced as well and so you mm-hmm. have these like cartoons that i think do stand the test of time on their own outside of the toys that came out at the time but which which 
I don't know if anybody was even thinking about it at the time. It was just like, hey, we need we need to make a million cartoons, so let's just hire a bunch of writers. And a, yeah. a lot of them ended up being really good writers. Yeah, J. Michael Straczynski no to, right. started that's, that's, on on the He Man and then Ghostbusters. Like a lot of these people that are prominent yeah. writers, like we're doing this, you know, to pay the bills, but they turned out fun stories in the meantime. Mm-hmm. You and know? I mean, JMS did a lot of cartoons, like he did a lot of cartoons, like Jason, the wheeled warriors and like other stuff yes, like that, which I watched, you know, um, I mean, I watched, but everything. yeah, so I, f- I find that really like fascinating. And, and like you said, there were cartoons before, obviously there were Saturday morning cartoons. There were weekday cartoons. A lot of those were like Yogi bear and stuff like that. But, um, I look at something like one of my favorite um, recent discoveries. I don't, I never watched it when I was um, uh, a kid because I don't think it was really on, but there was the 1980 to 81 series Thundar the Barbarian. Yeah. Um, which I love. Uh, it, it recently, a couple of years ago, got a Blu ray release um, via Warner Archive. And it's, uh, I think it's an excellent series. Um, you know, it had uh, Steve Gerber and uh, Steve Gerber was the creator. So you got, he's comic guy. Um, it had, uh, like I think Alex Toth and, yes. um, did the designs. And then I forget. So there were other like really big I think names. Kirby was involved. I want to he was Kirby. involved. That's absolutely right. Yeah, he was. And it had like a really good staff on it. And Roy Thomas was one of the writers. Like mm-hmm. it's, it was good. It was a good show. Yeah. And it was basically about this. It was post-apocalyptic future earth and this barbarian, his kind of, um, you know, uh, this, uh, witch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. And then he has his Ch- Chewbacca, the Wookiee coming yeah. with Ukla him, the mock, Ukla the mock. Um, yeah. and every episode was in a different, uh, like rebel, uh, rubbled U S city. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, I, apparently it's supposed to take place in the year 3994. So like, yeah. you know, way in the future. And so it's like, there's science and sorcery and all this stuff. Like it's, it's a really interesting series. Um, that only lasted 21 episodes, uh, yeah, it was on for that, a couple seasons. That's it. And that was it. And then like right after that in 1983, you have he man, which is not as well, not an interest as interesting a story basically designed specifically to sell toys. And that's the thing that blows up because it's well, got, it had a toy toys line. attached to it. It had a toy line that appeared a good year before, you know, that's right. Yeah. Like the toys, the, the toys were kind of known. Like I'm a big masters of the universe fan. At least as a kid, I was obsessed with it. And like you had the toy, we knew what it was by the time the cartoon hit. It mm-hmm. was something that we knew that we saw in the toy in the toy stores and in whatever the big box stores. And so when there was a cartoon for it, it was like they didn't have to pre-sell us that much about you know what I mean. But back then, you needed a, a, a the toy line needed a cartoon, and vice versa. It was a totally weird symbiotic thing. Like there were toy lines like Crystal Crystal Warrior. No one remembers that but me. But I loved it, but it died because there was, you have a Chris star. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have a Chris star that they just came out with. This is a new they toy. Did. Yes. They just came out with a Chris star. Um, but like that line died like fairly quickly because there yeah. was no cartoon. And yeah. if you didn't have a cartoon, there were a lot of those. Like they, you know, they just did it the old fashioned way. Power Lords, all these things that they would advertise. But I'm like, if you don't have a cartoon, then He-Man and Transformers and anything else that does is going to kick your butt in the G.I. Joe. House. G.I. Like, Joe, those were the all of them. Ones. Yeah. The biggest ones, so, are, or the ones who got out of the gate early remained the biggest ones. Before we get too far, we should say that m- almost all of this, and this is well documented elsewhere and, and, uh, you know, videos and things you can listen to. But um, when Ronald Reagan got elected president, one of, I mean, Reaganomics, not good for the country. No. Um, but one of the first things he did was to basically uh, appoint people to various positions and then repeal all of the like fair, you know, fair, literally something called the fairness doctrine, Mm -hmm. which his head of the FCC, Mark S. Fowler, um, uh, repealed. And that is the, basically you couldn't advertise to children was one of the things in the fairness doctrine. You couldn't make programming specifically meant to sell things because that's a commercial. That's not a, you know, you have to be able to, you know, Commercials need to be specifically called out as commercials. Series, you know, t- narrative television or or even you know nonfiction needed to be its own thing. But uh, at that point, they were like, "All right, well, hey." So by 1981, yeah. they had repealed that, and so then within a uh, year, within a year, you start getting toys, oh, toy companies producing or co-producing 
cartoons and like you even get like you know marvel studios or at the time marvel productions uh getting in the act like you know they had made some pretty crappy cartoons (laughs) in the 60s because they didn't have any money and then all of a sudden coupled with toys you get much better produced cartoons like the spider-man and his amazing friends cartoon is actually really well made because they were selling toys yeah i mean it's it's you know at the time not comics accurate but like i didn't care i was nine and um i mean we get on the marvel thing i mean secret wars happened but you know this now iconic brand that is going to be a huge blockbuster movie in a couple of Mm -hmm. years was created to sell toys Mm -hmm. you know like that was it like mattel came to marvel and was like we you know we want uh, uh, we're going to make this toy line based on your characters and we want something to push it. They didn't have a cartoon based on it, but right. they did have a comic, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was just, it was just all about corporate synergy, you know, with all of these things. And that's also why, like, this is like the sneaky bullshit thing that they did. All of those eighties cartoons have the little moral at the end, the like, because that was their way of look, no, 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 no. We're, we're not just for, you know, commercials. We're teaching kids, you know, how to stop forest fires and how not to be bullies and whatever they made up at the, you know what I mean? Like all of this stuff was only there so that it would be like, they would get away with like, this has some kind of, you know, good lessons for children and it, and it serves a purpose in the greater, you know, and it was just tagged on, you know, so they could get away with it. So they could get away with it. Yeah. Now, you know, and knowing is half the battle, like yeah, all that stuff, all of that stuff, which was always the end of every, yeah you know, um, cartoon episode back then. And yeah, it it was absolutely that. And I find that like, before we get into like these specific cartoons and everything like that, which obviously we've already talked about the, the big three, I think the early ones were He-Man slash Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe and Transformers. Those were like the ones that were, I mean, Transformers was a toy line in Japan way before. And yeah, um, Hasbro, I believe, got the rights to they got the, the rights to it to the toy it. designs. Yes, but then they made a show about the toy designs to sell the toys, which had which was not the same mythology. Yeah, as... the, the, there was no mythology to the toys. The toys mm-hmm. were just like, hey, isn't it? Because in Japan, children were just like, hey, it's cool enough that this plane turns right. into a robot. There was no story there, but they kind of knew that American kids wanted a story, and I think that's true. Mm-hmm. Like they wanted a whole mythology around it. So once they got the toys, they they hired like De- Denny O'Neill, famous for writing Batman. You know, the people who were at Marvel at the time developed Optimus Prime in this entire, you know, Autobots, you know, Decepticon mythology around this. Yep. And then they got the cartoon. It was that. It was. They, it was. The, that's the ultimate example because it was a three tier attack: mm-hmm. toy line, co- comic book, cartoon, all launching at once. And we all know what happened. It's still, you know, it has never died. No, um, not really. You know, and the, the the original comic was supposed to be it was, it was supposed to be a four issue limited series, but similar to it's like Star Wars in the seventies, it was it sold so crazy that they were like, all right, forget the miniseries part. We're just this is just an ongoing series now. Yeah, because it just sold so well because that's how huge Transformers was out of the gate. Like, and again, it was that three tiered approach of like we're going to hit kids from all sides. <laughs> Yeah. And, and there were so many of those like, um, you know, comic tie-ins for mm-hmm. all these, all these shows and toy lines and everything like that, whether they, I mean, like Chris star, like you said, yeah. was a, was an, a weird offshoot comic. Um, yes, he had a comic lasted like a year or two or something like that. Like it was like a year it died when yeah. the toy line died that they, they, they figured oh we a comic will do it, but it was, you needed a comic and a cartoon. Like, yeah. Kids weren't reading comics and that kind of numbers then to make a diff, a difference for the toy line. No, like I, I liked Chris Stark cause it was a cool, it's a cool design and character. Mm-hmm. Like I liked that idea, but most kids didn't know. There were a lot of examples like that. Like if you didn't have toys to go with or cartoon, like that toy died, you know? Um, or sometimes they just got a special. Sometimes you would just get mm-hmm. some, like for example, like we're, we're focusing a lot on the boy stuff, but like strawberry shortcake would occasionally have a special present animated presentation every year. And they would, that was enough Yeah, because kids would watch it, you know, and boys watched it. Like everybody watched all that stuff. Oh know? yeah. Yeah. I never thought it was like girly to watch she-ra or you know I, yeah. that's a little less of an example because that's still kind of like an action series but like yeah i watched care bears i watched strawberry short yeah. it didn't matter to me it was a cartoon i'm gonna watch i a mean cartoon. care bears is the, another huge example that was created just to sell stuff 
Oh, for sure. Until they, you know, figured out. I think the only example of a huge toy line from the 80s that had no tie-in like that was Cabbage Patch Kids. Cabbage Patch Kids yeah. somehow sold like crazy and didn't need this other media to do it. But I can't mm. think of any other example on that level. No. You know, like that's just how it was. And yeah, trans- but Transformers really hit. Like again, they did the three-tiered approach and it, did it worked. Yeah. It Which, worked and the forever. other one that was like, um, didn't need a cartoon because it had already been the biggest thing going for a million years at that point was Barbie. So like right. Barbie, Barbie was, didn't need it because it had been around forever. Yeah. But they started doing tons and tons of commercials for Barbie because yep. at that point you could market directly to children. So they right. would just make car- make a, a bunch of products and a really, and really bright and like friendly car- commercials. And yeah. they would put them on during whatever TV show that they knew kids or especially Barbie were was especially underhanded because Okay, Gem happened in the mid 80s. And that was one of those, which was toy line first cartoon. And we're going to do this whole thing. And the Barbie people got wind of it. And they were like, we're going to put out Barbie and the Rockers before Gem hits. And it's like, let them have their little, th- like they couldn't let them have not. their little corner of Mattel had to dominate. Um, and then they yeah, would advertise Barbie there. and the Rockers during Gem. Because, you know, <laughs> like they would, I mean, you know, they would advertise it during Gem. So it worked. It was just sneaky, but like there was just so many in the eighties and into the nineties. Like it was just crazy. Yeah. Like how much, th- and there were some that just didn't, that lasted like five seconds. Like they just didn't in humanoids, which super cool. I love in humanoids. Now I never watched it as a kid cause it wasn't uh-huh. on that long, but uh, no. I have since found it. I think uh, a lot of the things that like you and I have sort of bonded over this YouTube channel uh, uh, now called secret galaxy for a long time. It was called toy no. galaxy. Um, Dan Larson and uh, producer Greg. Those are the two guys yes. who make the, yep. those. Sh- and that's one of the best, one of the, you know, <laughs> free plug for them, but like, yeah, uh, they don't need our help. Um, but they make some really great stuff, but I didn't know about in humanoids other than just the name. And then a fairly recent video of his about in humanoids, uh, made me find it and it's all on youtube you can watch all of it and it's like oh this is really cool like they actually yep. made a cool like horror it was kind of horror show. and it was it was coming out at that era for me i was like 11 12 it was like kind of later 80s where i was starting to get into horror and it was mm-hmm. perfect because i still like kid stuff but i loved horror and then like here comes yeah. in humanoids but again it just didn't sell enough toys so it died you know within a year and a half or something like that there, I mean, yeah. there's so many, but uh, there's, it should also be noted, like a lot of the older tune, like a lot of the 70s, 60s cartoons never went away during this era either. They just mm-hmm. got repackaged and, you know, like, for example, like Flintstone kids. Okay, we need to sell little cute baby Flintstones. So we'll take this old IP that's been around forever and kidify it. A pup named mm-hmm. Scooby-Doo, you know, like all of a sudden, because Muppet Babies was huge like that's another was one. enormous yeah enormous and so everyone else tried to like what's a baby version of our long-standing ip you know um smurfs i was really into smurfs when i was like six seven yeah well and that was based on a weird like french comic book or maybe there were tons of toys from the get um so it just it was a really it's it's interesting how you know, and and it's true. Like it made a, this generation super obsessed with toy, tactile toys, action mm-hmm. figures, play sets, things that like I don't think modern kids care about. They like screens. They like screens. They're they're used to playing <laughs> games. They're used to watching little you know interactive things on their phones or their parents' phones or whatever. And so like the the action figure market only exists kind of catering specifically. And I mean there are ones made for smaller kids yeah but the ones that really sell the are the ones that are for the collector's market for people our age and it's working i buy so many action figures now. i buy so many and there was I, I i've had like you know ups and downs with my action figure collecting right now because in the last couple of years they they've really doubled down on like okay we're just selling to adults who want a nostalgia rush yep. so like i go into a target or a whatever and it's like masters of the universe looking exactly like it did 40 years ago, superpowers, all of these things that are rebranded so that the adults who love them can rebuy them because, you know what I mean? Because they're not really selling, they're not to kids. Mm -hmm. I don't think kids care about, or I mean, obviously Star Wars, which isn't Saturday morning, but like, same thing. Like kids don't care about that. There's different, there's different levels of the, of, of the toys markets now. So you usually have your, like your four to maybe five inch 
uh, not particularly articulated figures. Those are ones for actually four kids for the most part. But then you have the six inch variety, six to seven inch variety. Those are like you, like your Star Wars Black series, your yeah. uh, Marvel Legends, your um, now um, McFarlane, like yeah, and, DC, then, like, yeah. and then like NECA toys and stuff like that. Th- those are the different like you c- you can get like some good i mean i really like the hasbro Le- uh, marvel legend stuff i think they're really good and and price appropriate but like neca toys and like other you know like there are other kind of more boutique um companies that make really p- pretty and really like uh intricate and um well designed toys but those are much more expensive so like yeah, it but just they depends sell on them market. at the big box stores like those used yeah. to not like the neca stuff and that that was stuff that you could only get in comic book stores and collectors type places yeah. now you go to target and they have them yeah like it's crazy like those are stuff that you never you know but like there's so many adult collectors now yeah because like we said the kids don't they just they want stuff with screens i have defenders you know? of the earth toys now oh my God, because defenders of the earth we have to talk about defenders of the earth that was on for yeah, a couple we, of years that was on for a couple of years it's that not the best like, cartoon but I no it isn't it. but i like it and it was all like 1930s like comic strip characters like flash gordon and and the phantom and the phantom and mandrake the magician yes was, it was the um the king the king comics or king series or whatever king publications was the owner of those but they were all yeah 30s pulp characters and um, you know they made them relevant to kids for five minutes you know and yeah they made it kind of like futuristic kind of set it in in flash gordon world and ming the merciless was the bad guy and everything like that yeah um and of course, there were always there were kid characters too. That was always a big thing in, in those. They always, always had to have a kid character, which even at the time I sort of hated. I hate it. Yeah, it's like I don't need to have a kid there for me to feel like because I don't know if it's the same for you. Probably these people, these these executives or whatever, thought they need to be a kid in there so that the kid can have a uh, a representative character, like the people yes. watching could have a representative character. I didn't want to be a kid. I wanted to be Batman. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. I so think I, I was in the middle because I loved Robin. And I think I probably loved Robin because he was a kid or a slightly, you know, slightly older than me, you know, but like there was that. But like I could always tell when they made up a kid character for the TV. Even as a kid, I'm like, these characters are not like, no. from the mythology. Like you just made up Wendy and Marvin to go with the Super Friends. So there was teenagers you know do you know what i mean like you just made yeah. these characters i think it worked like it worked with jubilee because jubilee was like mutant she had powers she was from the comics it was that was fine but like yeah. whenever it was like and here's whatever this orphan you know that tags along with us i always rolled my eyes like it was, I, I think it was, every kid knew that that was just to sell to us yeah it was, you know, it was often a kid or two and dogs yeah, those and, were the and yes even and, and spider-man was not about like spider-man and his amazing friends had ms lion they had a little dog that was from <laughs> yep. like, and I'm like, why is this dog here? Like going yeah. on the adventure. Oh my God. But is there a more annoying character than Spike? Spike Witwicky in the friggin Transformers show? No, like, no, no. Yeah. Like nobody wanted that. No. Like we just we wanted, wanted Transformers. I didn't even really need the humans in it at all. Like I understand that the battle took place on earth and they were like human looking yeah. creatures, but like, or not human looking, but like, you know, cars and trucks and stuff that are on earth now but like i don't need humans involved that's why i like beast wars so much look we can talk about beast wars another time i I think that deserves its own podcast because i love it so much and i I know that was after i was watching but i'm aware of all the beast wars stuff yeah i know a lot of people have issues a lot especially a lot of people who like g1 transformers and even g2 transformers do not like it because it's not cars and trucks and planes Right. And yeah, and stuff. I, I, I've noticed that, but it kept that brand alive. It kept it alive. And it was actually, it, you know, it's a really well written yeah. show. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. The two things I want to bring up before we get into the specific cartoons are those things you mentioned earlier, which were very big toy lines that were based on comics. So you have Secret Wars, which you mentioned. Yeah. And then you also had um, DC Superpowers, which oh, Super so Friends, but like the original super friends show did not have anything to do with this that was made earlier no, it, but right. then when they the challenge of the super friends or whatever that was called yeah. where they had a bunch more characters from the justice league and stuff because that was trying to sell the superpowers toys no that was before that, that was, was also before. late oh, okay. that was late 70s that was yeah they had they didn't have a toy line in believe it or not in the 70s this this doesn't sound crazy to anyone you know younger 
Marvel and DC shared a toy license. They were Mego toys and they both were advertised together and they were on the package together. So you would pick up a Superman figure and it was like, buy these other Mego action figures and there was Spider-Man and there was Hulk. Never in a million years would that happen now. Never, ever, never, never. No way. Ever. Yeah. But in the early 80s, they split up. They decided that, okay, Mego went bankrupt and they're like, we're going to take these licenses separately. Marvel went to, I think, Mattel with C- and became Secret Wars. DC went to Kenner, who was just coming off of Star Wars. Right. So they were king right now. And they got superpowers. So this is 84. In 84, they rebranded Super Friends to go, which had already been around for like 10 years. You know, but then they were like, right. let's rebrand this show as the legendary superpower show and have it incorporate That's elements right. of the toy line. That's when they did it. And the toy line, that was it. Secret Wars was the better comic, but the toy line, the, the DC superpowers totally kicked the, the Secret Wars right in the butt. Yeah. Like, it was a better toy line because they came out the gate with like all the main Justice League and Luthor and Joker and all of these characters. Whereas Secret Wars was like, where's Thor? Where's Hulk? Or, or we don't want to make new bodies. Those are bigger bodies, so we don't want to even bother. They all have the exact same body. So you were missing major, major characters. Right. And it didn't land as well, whereas Superpower is just, you know, and it was also a overarching merch thing. Like there was mm-hmm. like, tons of stuff, but that's when they sort of like, they grandfathered Super Friends into it, which mm-hmm. had already been a, around for a while, but then they just rebranded the show for like two seasons so that it re- would reflect Superpowers. But that was like another big one. Yeah. And I remember having a lot of those toys and not realizing that that was what it was. You know what I mean? Like it was just yeah. like, it was a Batman toy or Superman toy. You know, I, we had my brother and I had Batman and Robin, Superman, Wonder Woman, the Joker, the Penguin. I'm trying to think of some of the, like, if there were Brainiac any other, was one. I didn't have Brainiac. Um, but though, I mean, like those were, I think my brother still has some of them. They're like broken, but he like still mm-hmm. has them, you know, That's cause cool. a lot of those ones had, um, you know, you squeeze their legs and they move their Yeah, They all had a little stuff, action like, feature. But yeah. After, 40 years they broke <laughs> like broke. the legs broke or whatever yeah um you squeeze uh wonder woman's legs and her and the, uh, the last she, she does yeah she does the the bullets deflecting thing yeah the bracelets um, which yeah. was great like uh, out we get the flash of course uh because he he had the same movement as superman which is just running he, could, he would do the run running pose yeah um but man like i i I think between that and reruns of the old Adam West Batman show, that's the reason I even like cared about DC sure. comics yeah. uh, at all when I was a kid. And then, and then of course you get to 89 and the Batman movie and that, yeah. you know, everything changed then. Well, um, I've always said that I think I'm a bigger DC guy than a Marvel guy simply because I became cognizant in an era when that was dominant. Like I'm, I turned four in 1978. Okay. 1978, you have Superman, the movie, you have Batman, the 60s show, in endless reruns every day. Mm-hmm. You have Super Friends on Saturday morning, and you have Linda Carter's Wonder Woman on Friday night. That was just the perfect storm to make me a DC fan. Whereas, really, the only character that had any Marvel character that had any kind of like media was Spider Man. Like yeah. back then, nobody else, and the Hulk show. So those were the two that you knew, mm. you know. But everything yeah. else, like you know, I couldn't read yet. You know, I grew up in a comic book household, but I couldn't read yet. So it was all about TV and movies. So. DC was where it was at for me and caused my interest in, you know, all this stuff that came later, you know? Yeah. It's, I, I think it's, yeah. Cause I definitely remember, you know, the, uh, the Spider-Man series did not last particularly long. It also wasn't that good. Um, no. it's also hard to do Spider-Man when you don't have a budget, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, it, all, first of all, it was in Los Angeles and that's Spider-Man that's is the weird. New York show. And there's yes. like, not enough big buildings for him to swing around. No, like, but there was the cartoon in reruns too. The cartoon, the cartoon was super, for sure. Spider-Man, every, Spider-Man I think that's whatever Spider can, of course. So it was already old by the time I was a kid, but like it was always on. Yep. You know, like um, it was on some station. And that, I mean, that's not a very well animated show, but it's nope. better than a lot of those other ones. Uh huh. Like the Hulk, I, was it just called like the Marvel Superhero Hour or something like that? But it had yeah Iron Man and the Hulk and the um, 90s, yeah. So Mariner, I think they had their own like little offshoot, you know, within that show. But those are basically just vaguely moving. Um, oh, yeah. The 60s ones where they images. were basically just animated panels from the comics. And it was really crude. Yeah. And the voice acting was bad. They had very catchy theme songs. 
but that's where all the budget went was to those theme songs because everything else about it was you know but it got those but it got those characters out there to kids you know kids watched whatever that was the thing about being a kid in the 80s 70s 80s 90s you didn't have a million options so you watched what was on yep <laughs> and and if it was on you watched it and so you knew what all of this stuff was and it got into your psyche very early and you know because there wasn't you know outside of cartoons there wasn't a lot of family friendly programming hmm. you know so that's kind of why we're all sort of you know obsessed with thundercats still and whatever yeah thundercats was a great example thundercats and silverhawks and um yes there was a third do you remember the third one it was yes, tiger sharks t- tiger sharks none of the other two were ever as big as thundercats no no thundercats was, it was kind of it was like the voltron problem voltron was actually two, there were two voltrons when people say voltron they think of the lions yeah. not the cars because people just it was that was the one that made the first impression yeah you know and this with thundercats too it was like okay like that was the bigger one silverhawks to a certain extent you know that was i loved silverhawks that was the one that i liked better personally was silverhawks even yeah. though they're the exact same show like they're, they're the exact same show yeah and then and tiger sharks only existed within a like a block of cartoon programming called uh comic strip some weird thing yeah yeah um and it was basically like humans who go into a weird um, pool, magic pool, and they turn into like anthropomorphic, yeah, uh, you know, underwater creatures. So there was like a shark. The main the main hero was a shark, and yeah. then there was a porpoise guy and a dolphin guy. It was a really weird. Guy. It, was it was not really as weird. cool as Thundercats. It was not as cool. Not looking. even a little bit. No, but yeah, Thundercats was another huge one. I think that's like the fourth biggest one of that era. Like mm-hmm. oh, after yeah, G.I. Joe, yeah. G.I. G. Joe, you know, those four just sort of ruled. And for me personally, Robotech was huge. Robotech was absolutely oh, yeah. a I huge. Mean, yeah, that was big. Robotech is a really interesting. I wrote a whole big like history of it of several years back when they put out a, the Blu-ray set. But uh, Robotech was an amalgamation of three completely unrelated mech anime that they got the rights to redubbed, recut all this stuff. Uh, it was kind of the same thing they'd been doing for a while, like with um I think it was actually the same guy uh, who did um, like Speed Racer, like because the original anime is called Go Mock Go Go Go, um, mm-hmm. and it's a little more adult as often those anime are. But um, so you had the G, you know, the first iteration of Robotech. They ran out of episodes. They needed more episodes, so they licensed a different cartoon, um, yeah, with different characters, and said that that was later on in the you know the timeline, which is actually what happened to Voltron. Like once they ran out of Beast King Go Lion. They had to. Yeah, they you needed to back in the eighties. You needed sixty-five episodes to do a weekly afternoon strip yeah. of shows. Robotech Macross. There was only like thirty-five or something. I don't know. Yeah, they well, didn't have yeah. enough. Yeah, it was always so, fewer than fifty. Like for most of those anime at the time, because they were, you know, prime time shows, and they would yeah. very rarely get multiple seasons. Yeah, um, and yeah. that's very much what happened with Robotech. It was like, and I, as a kid, had no idea. No idea that those three shows had nothing to do. They did such a good job yep. of creating a storyline that was cool. I know that there are anime purists who hate it. There are anime purists who make it makes them really angry. But I, I think that the Robotech version is better. Like the the storyline that ties all of those together is really epic and cool and generational. And I and I loved I loved it more. Plus, Robotech had the first drag queen I ever saw in like a cartoon. And parent, no one <laughs> cared. Nobody cared. Like there was no nowadays. That would cause like a meltdown on Fox and everything. They would never get by. But back then, I was like, oh, okay. One of the main superhero you know, hero characters is a drag queen who flies a you know transforming robot plane. You know, and that's just how it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but that one was very different too because it was based on an anime. It was way more adult than anything else yeah. that we were watching because characters died all the time, mm-hmm. which was highly unusual. We were used to the GI Joe thing, which is plane gets shot parachute always you know parachute guy no one ever died in those things Mm -mm. you know you just weren't allowed to kill the characters and here came robotech you know and hit me right at that age where it was like oh my god they they died like their stakes on this show like it was crazy you know so that was another big one they had done that with um with Voltron, like in Beast King Go Lion, one of the main characters dies like partway through the series. And then like he's replaced as pilot by somebody else. And yeah. uh, they didn't want to do that. So they just said that he was like hurt and off somewhere. And then like 
the, the within Goline, I think his character is either cousin or twin brother or something shows up, and so they just said that that was him who would come back, and it was that's yes, a really easy I way to remember get that. It. I remember that. Yeah, like they brought him back. Yeah, because you couldn't kill him. You couldn't. Yeah, like, you couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't kill characters, which I just I, you know I don't think that's good for kids either. Like it's like it just teaches them death doesn't happen. <laughs> you know yeah. and it's like that's not good that's why i think robotech was so cool it was like oh yeah no sometimes if you're fighting and you're in a war like you don't make it people die and somehow they got away with it i don't know how they got away with that show sometimes but they did because it was already done it was done yeah they'd already they'd already made it and they kind of they were it was easier to cut like a, a few seconds out of something than to completely rewrite an entire episode or something like yeah. that so they got away with it in a different way and you know but when you look at something like the Transformers movie where they were just like, we need to introduce a bunch of new characters to sell toys. Let's kill off all the old characters. That did not work. It, that didn't work. And they had a million, you know, parents complaining about how I took my son and or daughter and or children to your, to your movie and Optimus prime. And like, not only just Optimus prime, which is a, which is a harrowing scene. Yeah. The opening has the Decepticons like kill off Ironhide and like, prowl and like a bunch of characters we all love right away and they don't even have lines yeah. they just get slaughtered on screen i mean it's um, kind of dope like looking back on it i'm like the balls to do that yeah, <laughs> like it was sure. kind of great but yeah it's it traumatized that, yeah um the gi joe movie was supposed to come out first and then they held that for some reason and then the transformers movie came out first and so what the transformers movie was doing was aping the gi joe movie which was going to kill duke and so because they didn't want to do that and and incur the same wrath they they put in a line that duke is in a coma even though it's like how do you know he's in a coma immediately <laughs> like oh no he's in a coma right, <laughs> like, right. he literally goes oh oh no he's in a coma like it's right. ridiculous but it's, um they just couldn't they couldn't kill him off they because kill him yeah because he was the main character like yeah or at least the leader character so anyway i i find that stuff really interesting um and once we get to the 90s which we're not quite talking about but like it's interesting to see how like that's when the comic book cartoon became a big thing which then began Huge. more toys that was yes. really big um but yeah. that was off the success of batman and batman the movie which became batman the animated series which then we had all those uh, marvel cartoons that were kind of like we need to compete with the batman and superman stuff um and then you get back to the marvel versus dc of it all but it's, I mean, it's interesting yeah. it took until the 90s it took a, it, until a live action movie of one of them really became popular for that to be like the thing yeah um, that and i think just they couldn't ignore what the comic sales were for things at marvel at the time you know they tried I mean, x-men yeah. to, they tried to get x-men greenlit for years and years and no one would go for it mm -hmm. until you know one of the things was like yeah x-men number one sold eight million copies like you yeah. have to like this is a thing you're dumb if you don't cash in on it and so they did, and you know, X Men begat so many things. You know, so many yeah. Marvel cartoons, Spider -Man. and Spider Man, yeah. and they were the first time kids. Like, so at this point, you're a little kid, but I'm in like my late teens, early twenties. I'm watching these because they were the first time that these comic characters that I loved were done kind of accurately in any yeah. kind of media. Like X Men, for whatever crude animation it might have had at first, was very comics accurate. Spider Man was very comics accurate. You know, it wasn't like it used to be when I was growing up, like, whereas, you know, Super Friends just they didn't care what the comics did. Like, you know, Spider-Man and his amazing friends. I love that show. But like Peter Parker never lived in like a high tech apartment with like super powered roommates. Like that was just something made up for the cartoon. Yeah. This felt like the cartoon, the comics. And well, it, and it cool. followed so much of what like, you know, I've since gone back and read like the first, you know, the, the Lee and Ditko Spider-Man stuff. Uh, those first 32 or 33 issues or however long Ditko was on there. And you get in successive issues like not Green Goblin, but like Doc Ock and the Lizard and Sandman yeah. and Craven, like they all come out within issues of each other. Yeah. And that was what the cartoon did. Like it started, I think it, it did Hobgoblin first because Hob Hobgoblin was in the comics at the time first. Uh, yes. or, or was in the Goblins at the time, but then Green Goblin came along later. But like that's the only real big change that they made. Like the first issue or the first episode i even called it an issue the first episode was the lizard and then you had yeah. dr octopus and you know just all of the all of the villains that make up the great yeah. spider-man rogues gallery were all in the the cartoon really early on yeah and like kingpin and Smythe were like season-long baddies and like yep. which was and they really did awesome. long ongoing story arcs which 
superhero animated shows at the before that never ever did. They were like, no, 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 Batman we're gonna do this. Do Batman doesn't do it. Batman and Superman yeah. don't do it, but the Marvel shows did. Yeah. The Marvel shows had like season long arcs that were that kids could follow. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was really cool that they did this. I think we should say that the it wasn't just Batman the movie that did this. There's a there's the 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 middle thing between 80s and 90s cartoons, which is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> is Ooh, yep, good point. Yeah, huge into getting all of these comic book properties, I think, cartoons. Because yeah, that was such a about this crazy fairly, success. Yeah. You and I talked about this uh just the other week. Yeah. Um about how it, you take an indie comic that is a parody of other comics. Like it's kind yes. of a parody of daredevil and, and whatever other thing you mentioned. X-Men um, Teen Titans. I mean, so that, you know, teenage yeah, yeah, yeah. Teen Titans, Teen, yeah. mutant X-Men. It was all of that. Yeah. Uh, it's a parody of that. It was kind of, it was dark. Like the, the yeah. early comics are pretty violent. Yeah. Um, and, and playmates got the rights to it and then decided we need a cartoon let's revolutionize the entire world of cartoons yeah. and toy sales. Like yeah, playmates, you this... cannot underestimate how smart playmates was to totally get that at, at the time. Like, and it became a phenomenon. And the fact that there was a movie that came out last year that did really well, it has never gone away. And I, I'll, you know, I'll talk about it. In my 1984 piece, but it's like the thing that makes 1984 unique is so many of these things that appeared that year have a staying power that's crazy like yeah. there was a ninja turtles movie this last year like you know it it's crazy how that's just never gone away for long mm-hmm. um yes it's and ghostbusters it, it, too like if you're going to like the movie slash yes cartoon well, route, I, I feel that ghostbusters longevity because i've seen some people especially online say why is there this kind of sentimental nostalgia kind of amblin thing with this new, these new Ghostbusters movie when the original Ghostbusters movie was just this goofy comedy. And I'm like, the cartoon. It's the cartoon, the yeah. Real, it's the cartoon which developed this whole mythology. And the cartoon lasted for like, I don't know, like six, seven seasons? Real yeah, Ghostbusters was were, on for a long time. Yeah. There's a really interesting thing because there was they were making two separate cartoons at the same oh, time. Oh, yeah. This story is weird. Wh- so like – there was the syndicated weekly, you know, like uh, every weekday episodes. And then there was the Saturday morning version. And so yeah. the syndicated version had a lot more episodes. Yes. Um, but was less, they had less money per episode because they were making a lot more. But that was the one that was run by AJ Michael Straczynski. And those episodes, I think by and large, people consider like very, very good, good to great episodes of, of cartoons. And then you had the much sillier and less um yeah uh a grown-up i guess or like less in- interesting saturday morning version um that focused on slimer and so eventually it became yes. slimer and the real ghostbusters and the reason yeah, it was a real really weird a convoluted story too but there's um, another weird i thought this is what i thought you were going to talk about with ghostbusters there was the weird ghostbusters cartoon that also had nothing to do with the movies yeah so way know. back in the 70s yeah um starring um uh, 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 what's his face? Uh, Larry Storch and um, uh, Forrest Tucker from F Troop. For some reason, uh, they were on a Saturday morning live action show called The Ghostbusters. Yes, which was about a, a silly pair of dudes and their friend who was a gorilla hunting mm-hmm. ghosts, and is yep. a very dumb and silly show. Yeah, um, and it like lasted one season. Yeah, like real dumb. But then when the movie G- Ghostbusters came out. Um, I think who was it? Was it Ruby Spears? I was one of those. No, it was Filmation. Filmation, it was Filmation who much. did Masters of the Universe and all that. That's right. They were like, "Hey, we have the name the Ghostbusters. Like, you need to pay us. Yeah, you need to pay us." And they were like, uh, "No." And then he's like, "They were like, no, you really do." And so there was this whole thing between the the movie studio and and Filmation. They got paid, but then Filmation was like, "We still own the name, so we're gonna make a cartoon based on our old show, which is yeah. a little more like." Um, you know, it's definitely more car- uh, uh, ghosty, I guess. They yeah, and more, more fantasy like. More fantasy, but you still but had. They, but that's why the 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 cartoon is called the real Ghostbusters. It's shade. It's, it's shade. shade. It's like it's like well, that other one. That's we don't know what that. We're, this is the real Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, because uh, kids, I'm sure watched. I mean, I watched the filmation Ghostbusters cartoon because my grandma would rent when I would go stay with my grandparents. They would rent uh vhs tapes from the grocery store back when you could do that yeah. and 
some of them were tapes of filmation ghostbusters and yep. so that's the only reason i even knew what it was yeah um and then yeah, I think it must it, have been really confusing to kids like i think sure. it was confusing to me i'm like what yeah why is there this other ghostbusters and what does it have to do with the ones from the movie it was weird it's a weird piece of like pop culture ephemera. i like it though <laughs> like it's not it's not good necessarily but i do like it like uh, I thought the gadgetry was really fun. It had a really yeah. interesting kind of more gothic vibe because uh, yes. it was more fantasy and everything like that. And there was Filmation like a nation had like really cool character designs and backgrounds for shows. They yeah. just reused the same animation over and over again. That was their weak spot is that yeah. they would, you know, just re. but like there does like, if you look at like masters universe and all those, those backgrounds are like those painted backgrounds are cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. They're gorgeous. Well, the and Filmation like, had the same. Yeah. Um, Hanna-Barbera, I think was like the yes. gold standard of that because they were the ones who kind of developed, like, you know, they turned animation into a, a, a force. Like it wasn't just yes. movies that came out occasionally or like badly animated cartoons. They were like, let's make the backgrounds beautiful. Let's make the character designs really iconic. And then what we, we, will save us money and time is that we'll only animate one part of a character at a time. Yeah. So like. If the character was talking, they, they weren't also running when they weren't also moving their mouth. They weren't, you know, like it was one thing at a time. And that was how they got to make all these shows, you know, Yogi Bear, uh, Huckleberry Hound, like all those shows. Snaggle yep. And then they made Johnny Quest, which I still think is excellent. But that yes. was like, let's turn paintings. Let's turn, ac you know, like comic book mm -hmm. strip, comic strip style paintings into uh, a cartoon series. And they did the same thing. And I still think that show rocks. Um but they're the reason and, you could get away with that at the time yeah. when there wasn't a lot of money in cartoons. Right. And I mean, Scooby-Doo's is another example of that. You know, those yeah. backgrounds on Scooby-Doo are so cool. Oh like God, those like castles so that they would go to. And yes, the animation was limited, but like, man, those backgrounds, those are super cool. You know? Yeah. I, um, I, I had never watched the entirety of the, you know, Scooby-Doo, where are you? Uh, until they put out the Blu-ray set a few years ago. And I was, and it, you know, of course it's gorgeous. It's an, it's an HD. Like they've really cleaned yeah, it yeah. up. They spent the time on it. Um, I still don't love Scooby-Doo, but I, I like, I get the appeal of it <laughs> because it's Scooby -Doo, so. Scooby-Doo, I think is one of those gateways to horror for uh, me as a kid. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Like I don't know that I would love horror as much if I didn't have that, like, you know, baby's first horror, which was Scooby-Doo, which of course always was safe in the end because it wasn't really a monster, but like. Right it didn't matter the monsters were creepy when you thought they were monsters, even yeah. though you always knew that they weren't going to be because there was a formula. Yeah. You know, but, um, but yeah, that's another, that's another one, but that was super still around. Like that's never gone away either. No. And, and it is re, you know, and you mentioned a pup named Scooby-Doo, oh. like that was definitely a, I won't say a placeholder, but like that was on Saturday mornings. Like that was definitely something that was on Saturday morning in the late Saturday 80s. Saturday mornings. Was, yeah. Yeah. And weekday afternoons were the thing were the thing yeah yeah let's talk we're... about some of our favorite like lineups of those like okay. um so you know i think one of the big uh i guess things uh innovations from my childhood was the disney afternoon yeah so they had they had the adventures of gummy bears which was its own saturday morning cartoon and then they had ducktales and then after that they were like well let's make an entire afternoon block and that's when you get stuff like chippendales rescue rangers and tailspin and darkwing duck and then eventually gargoyles which was trying to uh compete with uh batman the animated series um but for that a long cool. time that that was the only thing in the afternoons and then eventually fox started putting animaniacs and well tiny tunes and then animaniacs and yeah then that batman. was a warner brothers license to fox yeah yeah. before they launched fox but kids wb but like yeah no people always talk about the disney renaissance in films of the early 90s and of course that was the thing but they also was a disney renaissance on tv the disney afternoon was a huge thing i didn't really i mean i was only vaguely aware of it because i was in high school at the time but like yeah. i knew like i knew like that was a thing like people knew ducktales and all of chip and dale rescue rangers and gave those characters a whole new life whole new life with a whole new generation of kids it was so smart um and that they, those were huge, but then that yeah. caused, like you said, that began like Fox Kids became uh, because of that, like that happened mm -hmm. because of that. Then Kids WB because you know it, it's kind of like the early version of the streaming wars because Batman was on Fox Kids. Yep. And then they were like, "Well, why are we doing this for Fox? We'll just go start our own children's block of programming and populate it with Warner Brothers characters because Animaniacs was on Fox too, or at least Tiny Toons was." 
They were all they on Fox. They both were. They, they were both on were on there, and then they were like, you know what? We're just gonna go start our own kids network. <laughs> yeah, and then like, and then there were too many kids networks, and they cannibalized each other. <laughs> yeah. What I found really interesting is like where I grew up because a lot of the, these were mostly syndicated, not the Fox stuff. Yes. But, um, Disney Afternoon was syndicated, mm-hmm. and that was on the channel in in Denver. Channel two was uh, just a, a syndicated, you know, KWGN. So it was like a kind of offshoot of WGN in Chicago. Um, and that was where you watched the Disney afternoon. But eventually that became a WB affiliate. And so that like, um, like event, uh, you know, by the mid nineties, you had WB shows on channel two and not the Disney afternoon. And there was no right. Disney afternoon. Like once that you got sucks. to like the early two thousands, maybe late nineties, early two thousands, there just wasn't a Disney afternoon anymore because yeah. there was nowhere to watch it because this well, other I channel had the kind late nineties or early two thousands is like when it started to die. It was, that was the decline for sure. There's yeah. going to be people listening to this who have never watched a Saturday afternoon, you know, Saturday morning, weekday afternoon cartoon the way that we did because it stopped existing by that time. Well, now there's you know I mean? whole channels that are just nothing. You have whole channels. Like yeah. the advent of Cartoon Network and Disney Channel killed the Saturday morning slash yeah. weekday non-premium afternoon. Non-premium Disney Channel. Do you remember when Disney Channel was a premium channel that you would get? Yes, free yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. We, we never had it. We never had Disney Channel, but I had friends who had it. Like it just didn't. My, my dad was like, "There's nothing on this I want to watch." He was like, "Is there anything on this that you really want?" And I'm like, "No." There was like, some interesting stuff on the early, early Disney Channel. Like, like I said, we our cable network uh, package would be like, you get a free weekend of like HBO or whatever sometimes. And sometimes they would also give you the Disney Channel, which would, you know, they would have movies in the evening time. Um, but it was like uh, Mouser Size, which was literally just kids. Mouser Size, yes. With Mickey Mouse. And then there was like, uh, before they had animation on there, they had uh, ki- uh, people in costumes. They had Winnie Dumbo the Circus and Winnie the Pooh. Which were uh, Pooh Corner, I think. What was it called? Yes. Welcome to Pooh Corner. Welcome to Pooh um, Corner. W- uh, which were weird. <laughs> they were weird. I didn't have. They were weird. I would only see them when they would have those free weekend type things. Yeah. But they were weird. Uh, and then eventually it became it, just yeah. a basic cable channel. And then. Once it became a basic it, cable channel and they would run cartoons all the time, like kids programming all the time. It just cable killed, you know, the traditional Saturday morning, yeah. weekday afternoon cartoons that we grew up with, with, basically. But then, like, so you also had, I'm trying to remember, like, what everything was on. But so a lot of the Hanna Barbera stuff was, was like on ABC, I remember when we were like, yes. Like, like on they the kind of had a deal. Lock. They must have had a deal. Yeah. They must have had a deal with them because Scooby Doo was ABC um early you know all of ruby spears was another one they were like the wannabe hanna barbera well, they were thunder the barbarian was ruby they Spear. were thunder the barbarian they were a lot of stuff like again during the advent of the, the early days of deregulation it's like pac-man yeah was i think ruby Spear, uh, or maybe that was hanna barbera but like rubik the amazing cube that was a thing people rubik yeah. a toy a game that has no story became you know, a cartoon. Ruby Spears was the other one. Mr. T. Yeah, Mr. You T know, had his own cartoon. Laser Tag had its own cartoon. Laser Tag had its own cartoon. This is another weird thing of the 80s, late 70s, early 80s, too. Popular um, sitcoms would get weird cartoon versions, which was the a Happy phenomenon for. There was a. And, and it was very. Was it in con- space? They time traveled. Time traveled? So, okay, this is me as a kid who was very, like, weirdly continuity obsessed and, like, didn't understand. I'm, like, six, seven years old. Like, right. the, 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 these things, because it was the voices of the people from the shows. Mm-hmm. So it was, heard, it, was, it was, you would see Richie and it, you would hear Ron Howard and you would hear Fon. And I didn't understand, like, I'll come on the regular show. They never, ever talk about the fact that they met dinosaurs. Or that like they like all of these things happen, and I, I I do remember my brother being like those don't count. My older brother's like it's not, and I'm like but it's yeah. but it's it's no, it's their voices, it's them. But that was the thing. Like they time traveled. They had a friend who had a spaceship that let them time travel. Laverne and Shirley were in the army. Um, Gary Coleman from Different Strokes was an angel, which I guess meant he died, which is weird. But every like you know, and that continued into the nineties. Because into the mm. 90s, you started having, like, little Rosie, Roseanne. Like, these, these like, pop culture figures would some, somehow have these cartoons. And it was weird. But one of them that lasted for a long time was Louis Anderson. Well, Life yeah, with Louis was on yeah, I remember that. forever. And I wonder how many kids knew that that was actually a 
stand-up comedian that like grown-ups watch. Like I bet you most kids who watched it had no clue. I definitely didn't. Well, I knew who he was because I, you know, yeah. Um, but uh, I think that came about because uh, Bobby's World was huge, and that was a Howie Mandel yes. cartoon. Um, and I remember being a fan of Bobby's World, and because he would do this bo- this voice, this child voice of Bobby in his stand up act, and I didn't know that yeah. until he had a stand up special on like HBO, and my parents let me watch it, and they should not have done that because I was way too young, and he was not <laughs> for kids, right? right. <laughs> But he was doing the Bobby voice at the end. Like, saying the best really things that we out. ever watched as kids were the things that we weren't supposed to watch. Okay. Can we talk about this for a second? I know we're going all over the place. We, we're we following no direct path. <laughs> Speaking of things that are popular that they think will appeal to kids, how many R-rated movies became cartoons so that they yes. could sell toys? Or comic books. Yes. Like Aliens was a comic book that sold toys. But you had yeah. Rambo. Swamp mm-hmm. Thing, friggin' Robo the Cop. Toxic Avenger, RoboCop. Those were all very not for kids properties that, that had looked cartoons. cool or had some action element to it that then became cartoons so that they could sell toys. I knew what Swamp Thing was not from the comic or from the yep. movie, but yep. from the cartoon. And and I remember watching Toxic Crusaders. Yeah. Um and being really into it. And then the Toxic Avengers was on USA network when it was when it mm-hmm. was a disgusting pit of a channel yeah. um in the middle of the day on a saturday they ran all three of the toxic avengers movies and it scared the crap out of me because it's because they're it's you know they're gory they're very gory movies and very irreverent and my brain could not figure out like dark humor at the time it was just like yeah. no scary things are scary why is this funny like yeah i it scared me for decades. I won't say, <laughs> so maybe funny. not decades, but you know, a long time. It was like yeah. f- five or six and the friggin' toxic Avenger scared me. So anyway, I find that so interesting because they did sell toys. Like I had Swamp Thing toys. I had toxic Avenger toys. I had a Rambo figure. Like, why did I yeah. have these things? <laughs> it, I mean, and it doesn't get much more gritty and R rated and adult than RoboCop. And yet, absolutely. There was a to- there was a cartoon, a Saturday morning cartoon, and a toy line for this thing that was absolutely not meant for kids. Someone gets and shot in the dick in that movie. Someone gets shot in the dick in that movie, and then they're like, let's make this a cartoon. I mean, you can get it. <laughs> Robocop as a concept is perfectly toy friendly. It's just weird absolutely. that nobody cared then that like, hey, maybe we don't want to sell this because inevitably a kid's going to want to watch the movie. They're going to find out that there was a movie, and they're going to want to watch it, and they're not supposed to. And then they're going to watch it anyway, because that's right. what we did. That was what we, we did it, when Cable was you know. I mean, almost all of my favorite movies I growing up, the things that really imprinted on me are things that I saw only on cable. Yep. I didn't see these things in theaters until I was much older. Mm-hmm. You know, but they were the, the, the cable thing. The, things were on a loop in a way that I don't think younger generations now understand of like they needed to fill programming. So they would rerun movies and cartoon episodes over and over and over until yeah. you memorize them and you watch them because you didn't have anything else to watch. Well, and the reason like what you were mentioned earlier, like cartoons at the time, uh, weekly syndicated cartoons had to be at least 65 episodes yes. so that they could have. What is that? I can't do math in my head. Uh, f- like uh, 13 weeks. So like, yes. ha- you know, uh, it has to pad out 13 weeks and so they're thinking, they could run the yeah. entire series four times a year or whatever. Yes. You know? They, the thinking about it was that, yeah, kids will just watch anything over and over again. I don't think that was necessarily true because I do think that the He-Man line died prematurely because they stopped making new episodes. Yeah. They came a point where they're like, oh, we have two seasons. We have 140 episodes. We don't need to make any more new ones. And it's like, no, kids eventually get tired of watching the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Whereas Transformers kept reinventing itself and all these other cartoons kept reinventing themselves. They had a longer shelf life, mm-hmm. like literally, you know, in this case, but like, you know, on the toy shelves. So the reason was they just stopped making He-Man cartoons after two seasons and they figured that was enough. And no, it wasn't. You have to keep renewing the brand or it goes away. Kids will move on to the next shiny object. That's what we do. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's 100% the case. Like, uh, there were 130 episodes of Thundercats, which is not that far removed, but it was four different seasons. They would like, it was, play and they the kept seasons. renewing it. Yeah. They kept renewing it. And so like, they, they would bring in new characters. They would bring in new, like, yeah, like it was a thing all the time. Whereas He Man was in that Scooby Doo thing of like it was kind of the same thing, and it was just like they, 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 they you know. And then they got tired, and like they, it, it was one of the biggest crashes of 
a toy brand. Like it was selling in the billions for about three years. And then once they stopped making new episodes to promote their new line of toys, it like had a spectacular crash and they stopped. Like it was, it was really a toy line only for five or six years. And then it went yeah. away for a really long time. So that, and, and people were like, Oh, what happened? It didn't happen to GI Joe. It didn't happen to transformers. I'm like, well, they kept making new episodes, you know, like that's why, you know, kids, they, they, they underestimated kids and you know, their attention span. Yeah. You know? Like, original transformers only has 98 episodes only that's still a lot right. of episodes but that's a lot they for them. kept it going until the early 90s like it kept yes. going like it kept going there was new you knew there were new ones coming and there was they threw enough new episodes to refresh it that kids kept watching hoping that hey maybe they'll show a new one but once we knew that there wasn't going to be anything new it's like all right i'm gonna watch something else yep. you know? and, and there were and, there was ne there was never a lack of new things to watch so people like if they got bored they could just keep going and like yeah um you know I, th there was a show that was uh 1985 86 show that i actually never watched um at the time but i know about and i know was like quite popular because it's i think within the hasbro universe now which was mask m-a-s-k yeah uh, that was huge never watched that but i know that that was like that was a huge like you know, there were smaller, smaller f figures, but there were vehicles involved with the. Yeah, that was that was boys. not on the level of Transformers or G.I. Joe, but it was pretty popular. Yeah. Um, and then you also had the Centurions, which I only watched when I first got Cartoon yeah. Network. Yes, that um, was not as popular. <laughs> that was not as popular either. But there were a lot of those like G.I. Joe kind of um, knockoffs, I guess, or like yeah. sci fi versions. Because even G.I. Joe wasn't just a war show. It was kind of a sci fi show. Yeah, eventually, um, yeah. Um, they couldn't really do a war show for kids like you know no 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 no. not yeah. even rambo had some sort of like fantastical elements to it yeah that cartoon didn't last long did you ever watch the the uh the series cops uh not no not the, not i know which it's that voice one but no, no 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 there was one called cops i never watched it i was aware of it I, I think that's another one that lasted for like a year or something i don't remember being around was it longer it, no, I don't think that was uh, Deke animation. No, it was one season of Deke. Yeah, we have to talk about Deke because Deke did a whole ton of like it was Hanna Barbera, Ruby Spirit. Deke was one that did like Inspector Gadget and yeah, a ton of a ton of shows back then that just they just don't exist anymore. Yeah, the Littles. Let me see if I can find like a whole list the of littles. um of of I I still know the Littles theme song. I won't sing it. Like it's weird how these things ingrain in your brain. Like. Um, but Deke was uh, either French or French Canadian, uh, but it, well, Nirvana was the French Canadian one. Anyway, there were a bunch of these kind of like little off offshoot ones that were not any of the the big majors, but they actually had a lot yeah. of hits. So like, um, they also they adapted several or co produced, I guess, several um, anime like Ulysses Thirty One and the yep. Mysterious Cities of Gold that I remember watching on uh, mm -hmm. on Nickelodeon. Uh, you had Inspector Gadget, The Littles, The Get Along Gang, uh, Wolf Gang. Rock TV. <laughs> I don't Which, remember that one. That I do one, remember I Get Along Gang. Uh, it was about uh, it, it was a Wolfman Jack TV series, a cartoon series for kids. Uh, Rainbow Bright, Heathcliff, uh, Care yes. Bears, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, Jace the Wheeled Warriors, Mask was Deke. Yeah. Um, Dennis the Menace, the Real Ghostbusters. Yep. Um, the Adventures of Teddy Ruxpin, Beverly Hills Teens. Oh my God, I, Beverly Hills Teens! I still know the theme song to that. That was a really <laughs> weird thing because it really. Like I, I always remember the thing because they their version of Beverly Hills was like people living in castles on, over cliffs. One hundred percent, yeah. <laughs> and it was like I can only imagine some little kid visiting California, like I want to go see Beverly Hills, and it's like, yeah, it's not castles over cliffs. It's not. It's just big houses with rich people in them, but it's not like this weird version. But like Beverly Hills scenes was another one I remember. So what's funny is I just was looking this up. Beverly Hills Teens ran from September 21, 1987 to December 18th, 1987. <laughs> 65 episodes. <laughs> wow. You That's needed a, 65 There was a lot. There was, was a lot. lot. Was, but they rerun. But those they were ran for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, they reran them. The ALF animated series, uh, Dinosaucers, I, which was ex executive produced by Benjamin Melnicker and Michael Uslan, who are the guys who very smartly bought the movie rights to uh batman and, yep. and subsequently quite a lot of the dc canon and you will see benjamin melnicker and michael uslan's name on every batman movie because yep. they still own the rights and just license it out to warner brothers so it's crazy they are so frigging rich 
Yeah, they're um, so rich and smart. And they like <laughs> this stuff too. Like it, yes. it wasn't just like, hey, let's they were like comic book fans who bought uh I think Michael Uslan is the younger one, was a student, was a uh and Benjamin Melnicker was his like college professor and he taught a course in comic book art or something like that. And they just became friends and were like, Hey, let's buy the rights to Batman, something nobody cares about. Oh wait, yeah. you want to make a movie of Batman? Well, guess what? We're executive producers now. Right. Um, let's read a lot. Next couple. You got your new Archies. You got your, yeah. that cop show that I'm talking about. Uh, the chipmunks back when they made Alvin and the chipmunks, a um, like a, I won't say great. That was a big like, show too. That was a big that was, show. Alvin yeah. the show was a big. Alvin had a Saturday morning presence for like years. And then they got uh, they did a later edition of GI Joe, the eighty two, uh, an eighty nine to ninety two version. But okay. they also did all of the uh, Nintendo like shows. So they had like the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, Legend of Zelda, Captain and the Game Master, and then like Captain Planet stuff like that. So anyway, they yeah, we should start getting into the nineties. There was the, you started getting the serious pushback against the thirty-minute commercial cartoons. Yeah, they started to like. We need to do an eco-friendly. We need to start making these shows teach kids things for real. Yeah, and that's when you start getting Captain Planet, and that's when you start. It, it starts to lessen. Like it, it's they still do it. It's just less obvious because obviously yeah. there's a million Spider-Man and X-Men toys and action figures. Yeah, it's not like there weren't. It's just they just got a little bit smarter about it and less obvious because man, in the eighties they were just obvious about it. Yeah. yeah. Once you get once you get into the into the nineties, like they were obviously still making a lot of cartoons, Deke was, but like they were much more sort of um what which uh I would consider Sunday morning cartoons, which were on yep. different channels and were n- they were less polished, they were less interesting, yes. and they were generally titles you've never really heard of that much. Popples. So you had, you know, like they made a cartoon of Double Dragon that wasn't very good, and they made a, a cartoon of um uh, they made a couple Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons, one of which was good, and the other one is terrible. Um, Street Sharks, <laughs> Ultra Force, yeah. like some of these shows that were based on comics that were not. Right. Yeah. Anyway, Wildcats had a cartoon for Wildcats had a cartoon that went on forever, based on. A, I mean, or it had a comment. Uh, uh, that was a comic that went on forever. That had a cartoon that lasted one season. I love. Yeah. I had a bunch of Wildcats toys too because I was, yeah. you know, when the X Men came out there were a lot of like, let's make X-Men style superhero yes. cartoons. And that was one of them. And I, they made toys. And so I bought them and yep. I did not even realize it was, I knew it was a comic book. Cause, and, but they would, the name of the cartoon was Jim Lee's wildcats. And I was like, yes. am I supposed to know who Jim Lee was? Cause I wasn't like, well, right. I didn't know enough to know that he was the X-Men guy who broke right. away and all this stuff. Um, God, man, like I, we could talk about this forever. Maybe we should do There's another episode at some so point many. and specifically talk about like the fall of these kind of cartoons uh, in the nineties. Um, yeah, it was, a, they lasted well into the night. Like, they, yeah, they, yeah, for sure. Like, like, I think really the late nineties, like, you know, once Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon really, and Disney Channel became dominant, there just wasn't a need for just this little two hour block mm-hmm. anymore, you know, weekday afternoons or Saturday morning. And it just didn't need it anymore. Because kids had it whenever they wanted, you know, and, and streaming has yeah. made it even more so. Now it's like yeah. now the cable's obsolete. When you have streaming, you can watch whatever. But again, even on streaming, a lot of those '80s, like Hello Voltron, was on for like five seasons on Netflix. That's an '84, yep, baby. You know, like and yeah. so much of that stuff still resonates in a way that it's it's just the way they consume it is different. It's just completely different. You can have it whenever you want. Yeah. And um, you can watch a lot of these ones that we're talking about that are maybe not like super popular or owned by a bigger, you know, conglomerate or anything like that. But you can watch them on like Tubi or whatever. Some of these like yes. um, free ad supported um, like networks or whatever, like streaming channels. Like I, you know, that's that's there for you to watch. Like th- some of the ones that you can't really watch that much anymore are like you can still find them on YouTube. But like some of my favorites were like Mighty Max, which were were based on. Uh, toys that were the boy version of Polly Pockets, which were like these yes. little compacts that opened up into little tiny, little tiny play sets, but they made the boy version. I hate, I hate gender toys. Like get out of here. But that was here. really big. We have to talk about that in the eighties, especially everything was gendered. 100%. Toys and cartoons. Yep. Everything yep. was, this is for girls. And if you like this, just for girls and this is for boys. And the, you know, it was very that way. I, you know, like it's not fair I know that they were targeting us specifically us being, you know, young 
preteen boys. That was what yeah. they really wanted to sell. But they knew that they had to sell stuff to girls. And like, I just remember the girl aisle at the toy store, girl aisles. It was all pink. Like it was just yeah. nothing but pink. And it's like it nothing but pink. It, like it's so crass to think about nowadays because it's just like, yeah, anybody can play with anything. Anybody can like anything. Like we all know this now kind of instinctually, but like at the time it was just so you had your Barbie, you had cabbage patch or various dolls. And then you maybe had like those horses that had real manes. You could comb their uh, hair or whatever. Yeah. My little pony. Another oh, yeah, huge one that had a whole cartoon. cartoon. Yeah. You know, and I, and, and you know, here's the thing is, Every kid watched everything. So little boys watched all those girl shows and sure. little girls watched all those boy shows. Yep. You know, I think the one that really hit me that was just like, let's kind of do both with She-Ra. She-Ra was like, this is an action adventure show completely in the vein of He-Man, but it's with a, you know, female lead and all of the, the toys were like, I had the toys. Like, sure. I don't care if it was girl toys. Like uh, to me, it was part of the greater line of mm -hmm. the world because they crossed over all the time. And, but it was a still a really weird thing. So on the She-Ra cartoon, her villains were the Evil Horde. The Evil Horde toys were sold in the Masters of the Universe line. They weren't part of the She-Ra line. But on the cartoon, those were the villains. Only the, the toys were only girls. They were only girl characters with real rooted hair. And so if you wanted your She-Ra toys to fight your Evil Horde toys, you had to cross over the two lines. It was really weird, but that's that's the weird gendered thinking that they had going on. Yeah. Then, but for me, a, like a little gay boy, like it was catnip. <laughs> like it yeah. was like oh, because you know, it's like I love girly pink things, but I still love swords and fighting, and like you know, it was like all of that. It was perfect for me. You know, yeah. it was kind of the only one that was like that. You know? Yeah, it kind of was. Yeah, even just looking at some of these lists of of toys, like no, or, it, yeah. There wasn't like, a time. I mean, there figure was, line actually had figure one, line, no one female character. If that, yeah. if you that, had, you had Wonder Woman. Yep, uh, one. I don't even know in this in the um, like the Secret Wars line. There was no female characters. I mean, they they added um, uh, Firestar to uh, Spider Man and his Amazing Friends mostly just because they didn't want. They didn't have the rights to Johnny Storm. Yeah. Um, and so like, oh, I guess we could make it a girl. And then she could have a little cute dog that can be part of the show. Right. But yeah, there was no, there were girls on the cartoons. But oh, the sure. lines, like, you know, Master of the Universe, you got Tila and 90 dudes, you know, yeah. on G.I. Joe. You, you can and have the Evelyn, evil And Evelyn, you had Evelyn, you had the good girl in the background. And that was it. That was it. Like, it was just super, it was really weird. I, I, I think it kind of did damage to a generation of guys. Like, I mean, you know, there's, there's like, no way around it that like, this is what we're saying. It's like, it, it's harmful. Like, because they were specifically marketing to people, Yes, it wasn't about let's, you know, teach lessons about like togetherness or whatever. Like it was about selling toys and they were making it lowest common denominator. Like we were stupid yeah. and sucked in. It wasn't our fault. We were children, but yeah. like, yeah. they're like, what do boys like guns and fighting and superheroes and stuff? And what yeah. do girls like? They like horses and pretty dresses and stuff and baking yeah. like the fucking easy bake oven was marketed right. specifically to women. I think, or girls, I think that is yes. repugnant and yeah. like boys got to cook creepy crawlies or whatever. It was the exact yeah. same toy, but it instead, was the exact same toy. Yeah. Um, Everything was gendered and it, and, and, it, and especially when it comes to like the action figure realm, it, you look at these like toxic YouTubers that are like, I don't want girls. And I'm like, yeah, you grew up with this weird idea that like girls didn't exist in your space. You got right. one, there was one, there's one hot chick and then everything else was a male centric. So now they're adults who still carry this stupid mentality yeah. with them. And you can, I, I, I'm literally realizing this as, as we speak. This is what did it. This, this is, is what, what did, did it. it. This is what did it. You know, there was, um, there was oh God, so regressive Scarlet and GI Joe. Yeah. I'm trying to think who the other ones, Scarlet and then the evil, um, I forget her name now. The Baroness. Uh, Baroness, yeah. Yeah, like that's it. You got one. You you got one for each side and and, yep. and be happy with that. And I just I think, think in that Transformers, that's... like it took a while for them for R C to exist. Yes. But I don't even think there was an evil girl. Like no. in Beast Wars there were two. You had Air Razor okay. was the hawk for the maximal side, and you had Black Arachnia for the uh terror uh, pred predicon side. But eventually she became a good guy. So like it, it was just yeah like it's so strange like it's the only so girl in, in mighty max for example was max's mother <laughs> and like he had a friend but she was barely in any episodes yeah um 
yeah, it's so it's. I mean, that's the way it was. Like it, it, that's the like, way it was. And it, 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 you know, as much as I love like the superpowers line, I, as a kid, I'm like, how come there's only Wonder Woman? Like, there, mm-hmm. where's Supergirl? Where's Batgirl? Where's these other iconic? No, they had just decided that little boys will not buy a girl toy. But the, like I said, the weird thing is, we, kids of both genders watched all of this stuff. Oh yeah, every little boy watched Rainbow Bright because it was on, and you were gonna watch that. It was that, or you know, <clears throat> you know, the news. <laughs> You know? I'll be damned if I'm going to watch the news. No, not if you're eight. <laughs> you yeah. know? Oh, man. Yeah. yeah it was, this, is it was realizing that, this is literally me in this moment realizing, oh, God, this is where all this toxicity came from with these nerds. <laughs> the and sexist especially, toxicity. Especially by the time you get to the 90s, the early 90s. Like, all of the best X-Men characters from the 90s are women. Not all. Yes. I, that's that's broad. No, story not story, all, but, but a, like a lot of them. Most of them. They've, they've always been really good about being, at least the comics, a little yeah. less than the cartoons, of being pretty split between there's as many female characters as men. The, mm-hmm. I mean, in the cartoon, yeah, you had, it the was first pretty season evenly. Especially, yeah. you it had was four... Jubilee, Rogue, Storm, Jean. And yep. it was, that was crazy. Yep. You and know? Then... Other than Professor X, who was the leader, or you know the the, the yeah, mentor but, figure, but you yeah. had uh, Wolverine, Cyclops, Gambit, and Beast. So yeah, yeah, you had four and four. Yeah, that's pretty good. It, I mean, we, it doesn't. It feels crazy now, like that. That's a big deal, but it was a big deal then. It was a big deal because you just you always just had the girl, mm-hmm. like, and for them to just no, we're not going to do that. You know, even Power Rangers. You know, I mean, Power Rangers was better about it, but. Uh, it was always three two. Well, get, yeah, because even like the first season of Power Rangers is based on uh, the whatever like thirteenth season of Super Sentai or whatever, which is we can get into Tokusatsu. But they had point. I don't really know as much about Power Rangers because I was already a teenager. But like I know that they had oh, multiple remember. girls uh, in the show. Yeah, but like the original Japanese series, yeah. um, there was only the one girl. So like in, when they made the American version, like when you're watching the Yellow Ranger footage uh-huh. that was Japanese, that's a man because that was yeah. a, that character was a uh the yellow ranger was a boy in in that uh show but right. generally they had two girls um uh at least uh actually usually just two they had two and three <laughs> that was the way I mean, it went, usually uh, but i mean compared to the 80s it was better it was better like, closer to parody you now. know it was just it's crazy yeah you know things in this re- regard are better now yeah i'd like to think so and, and when you look at like you know how many women are fans of the MCU? I think that's a really good. Yes. And then obviously there and star Wars for that matter, but like you still get those, like, unfortunately it's people your age for the most part, your generation, men, your generation are so against women liking the things they like, which makes absolutely no sense. Wouldn't you want women to like something that you like? So that you have something to talk about. But now realizing how indoctrinated they were (laughs) into that mentality, they just, aren't adult enough to realize that like you were indoctrinated by these weird sh- these shows to think this way yeah that there was only meant to be one girl you know and she had to be hot i mean to be fair everybody did. was hot in those i mean it's not like you know yeah oh for sure no, nobody in cartoon there were no ugly people but yeah. um yeah yeah it is it is men of my generation it, the, the absolutely the worst and um, you know that's why like marvel fandom is or you know mcu fandom is fairly bad but star wars fandom especially is very very bad for that purpose but it's like they're still making this stuff and women and young girls still like it and like what you know because it's all at the end of the day (laughs) i hate using that phrase it's all soap opera like it's all like we're all just watching melodrama on on television or in movies like it's all just you know you i wanted you know various superhero characters to get together when i was a kid and it, it's the same now it's like it has nothing to do with whether or not you are we like watching relationships and so yes. like humans like need... watching relationships yeah uh and if it's all just people running around shooting stuff like it gets boring so like the best I shows mean, are the ones where x-men did it the best i mean really like the x-men really... really did with like let's make this about the relationships between these characters yeah you know in a way that previous car- superhero cartoons or action cartoons just didn't no, yeah. that was that still I think stands as one of the best adaptations of what would I mean not necessarily every individual story from the comics, but like yeah. what those comics were. Because if you read back, you know the old we talked about. We have a whole episode about the X Men if you want to go back yes, and listen to it. Yes, but um, those those Claremont books, he spent so much time, so many pages, so many panels in every issue of just people talking about their feelings, which is like yes, you know I'm I'm you know uh, the Brood Saga, which I just finished. Um, 
it, there's whole sections where uh, Wolverine and Carol talk about being like basically like emotionally and psychologically scarred by their experiences. And it's just yes. like, wow. I mean, he was the man. He was <laughs> it's like, it's amazing. Yeah. Like yeah. it wasn't perfect, but it was still like the seventies and eighties. So like there was a lot of stuff that that was still regressive, but yeah. like the fact that he was, he spent a lot of time to um, make storm the leader and have her kind of contend with that and have Cyclops contend with not being the leader anymore. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, cool. this is a tangent, but the, the storm for decades was, marvel's most prominent female hero because of yep. claremont mm -hmm. because you know which is why i think it's sort of gross that she doesn't have an ongoing series but that's a whole other thing <laughs> well, she do, i mean she's the lead of x-men red she's the leader of x-men but she's not i, I feel that of the modern x-men her and wolverine are the biggest breakout kind of it doesn't feel like the x-men without them characters of that mm -hmm. generation and well like gambit had an ongoing series of his own before storm like, come on. Yeah. Like, like it, it feels like when they did Marvel versus DC in the 90s, she was picked to fight Wonder Woman because not because her powers. I mean, it was she shouldn't beat Wonder Woman in a fight, but um, she was Marvel's most prominent female hero for yeah. sure. Yeah. And they've never really capitalized on that. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think the MCU, the average person would say Black Widow or Scarlet Witch now because the MCU is so huge. But for decades, it was Storm, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm hmm. You know? Oh, I think uh, I think that's a hundred percent the case. Like, yeah, there was you know, because like it, it's not Sue Storm. Like she was the first one, but like no. Sue is such a like for a long time, not not a hundred percent across the board, but was not an interesting character for a really long time. Yep, she was the token girl. Even Jean in the early like, I mean, God loves Stanley for various reasons, but like he couldn't write. Yeah, women. no, <laughs> he, no, he didn't know how to write women. women outside of men fighting over said woman yeah exactly yeah. i mean it was a good it was he was smart enough and progressive enough for his time to be like hey how about let's give the woman powers right and have them be part of the team as opposed to just on the sidelines or the love interest so i'll give him that yeah you know he he, he did that as at least but yeah he didn't know how to write interesting women to save his life no but hey uh yeah. we somehow got back to talking about x-men and yeah because it's inevitable it's, it's inevitable, inevitable. Whatever, there's stories um, about them. There's Saturday morning cartoons about them. It counts. We did it. We did it. Yeah. We came back. Um, well, yeah. So the, obviously, we, there's nothing like to wrap up other than just we need to be done. But um, uh, go uh, if you go to nerdist.com sometime in the near future, uh, yeah. we'll have a series of uh, you know the the big pop culture pillars of 1984. Um, and I I think you're starting with cartoons and toys. And yeah. So yeah, in that list will be Transformers for sure. Um, yeah. It's Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Voltron, Secret Wars, um, all of that is that they're 84 babies. Like mm -hmm. you. <laughs> it's me. I'm an 84 yeah. baby. Still feels weird to be like, I'm turning 40 this year. I know Dude, that that's old I'm... hat for you, but. It's traumatic. It was traumatic. This year's going to be really <laughs> traumatic. It's so, it's so difficult. It's just weird when you realize that things you love are older than people that you know. That's like a weird thing yeah. of like. Oh, this thing that I, it, it, there are adults who have children now who are mm -hmm. like, it's so weird. It's so weird. But it just yeah. happens. Well, it finally happened. I mean, I'm a relatively new fan in, in terms of uh, the years I've been watching it, but of, of Doctor Who and the current doctor well, yeah. is the first doctor who is younger than me. It <sighs> finally happened. Yeah. Like even, even uh, Jodie Whittaker was born in 82. So she was still a couple years older than me, but Shooty Gott was born in the nineties, I think, or the late eighties, like. So, hey, it happens to the best of us. We all get it's old and we so still boring. like all the same shit. Feels yeah, like we're children money. because we still, we spend yep. our disposable income on comic books and toys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, I think we've talked about it before. It's like a weird dopamine we, thing. It, it is. Just... It hits, man. Yeah. I don't. I don't even have a, a connection to some, uh, to like Chris Star, but I'm like, this is a cool toy. I'm going to have it. Like, it's, it's weird. Anyway. Uh, if you'd like to get a hold of uh, Eric, uh, I believe you are still yep. hanging on to that that Xbox. I'm, That's a different. I thing. won't ever call it that. That's still no. Twitter. It's still Twitter. Yeah, I'm uh, at Geek Boy Eric on Twitter. Yes, please yep. find me there. I'm on Threads as well, but nobody uses it. And no. <laughs> it also yeah, is bad, I'm, and and it recommends you know stuff what? you actively hate. Yeah, yeah. It, it took about five seconds for that to get as bad as the other place. I hate to tell you, people. Yeah, it took it's no time yeah. at all you know so but yeah you that's know? where you can find me yeah you can find, find you can find me at geek boy eric on threads and on twitter <laughs> 
Uh, you can find me on Instagram if you feel like it, functional underscore nerd. Follow me on Letterboxd, Kyle underscore Anderson. Um, we, I, in the some near future, I will have a big long Doctor Who video, which I will talk about when that gets closer too. Um, but just get ready for that. So thank you all for listening. Uh, I've been Kyle Anderson. Join me again next week on Laser Focus when my guest will be a different person. Bye-bye. Laser Focus is a production of Nerdist Industries and Legendary Digital Networks. It was produced, edited, and hosted by me, Kyle Anderson. For more, visit Nerdist.com. Nerdist.com.